Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. This is Sohini from South Bay, California and I welcome you today. Apologies beforehand for the poor lighting. Today was my first day at my new job and I'm super excited about it to tell you a little bit more in the episodes to come. But long story short, virtual onboarding, as you know, can take a little bit amount of time. So I was unable to film in the daytime with good light. So I'm doing it at nighttime. So hopefully you're able to cope, uh, you know, with the not so optimal settings for today. So I apologize for that uh, to begin with. But today's session is extremely exciting because today we close out the 10 week long program, which was build your own research internship that we've been doing so far. So today I will be showing you the final results and I'll be going through what we did completely. And I'll be showing you the GitHub repo that now I have online and it's publicly available for anybody to see. And I have an adjoining document with that as well so that you can come and visit this as many times as you like in future. You can even retake this whole program altogether or you can just use this as an inspiration to create your own dossier. So let's get straight to it. I wanted to mention uh, in the beginning that the idea for this 10 week long build your own research internship in AI was for you to gather experience doing the step by step process for a research project in AI. And at this moment, I would like to invite anybody who has finished uh, such a program, even in future, if, if you're watching this, you know, uh, beyond August 2020, you can actually once you've done building this whole GitHub repo, just send me an email to the email ID that I will be linking in my description box below. And I would love to, to look at it, give you some feedback, and also to uh, in, in order to give you a recommendation uh, for your uh, GitHub uh, repo on, your, on LinkedIn, on your website, or in whatever way or form that you like. So I invite you to finish this task and in order for you to get a good reference going forward for a job, for uh, you know getting into universities, academia, whatever you may, uh, I'm more than happy to help you in your journey ahead. At this time, I wanted to make an announcement as to what is to follow in the weeks to come. So now that we have completed this, uh, you know, 10 week program, build your own research internship, which was more catered towards people who have some, uh, you know, machine learning or data science background to begin with. But now on from now on, and this is again based off of what I've been getting, you know, requests from my subscribers is I wanted to focus more on people who are getting into the AI and ML fields for the first time. So on a weekly basis, I will be looking at some of the questions that I receive on LinkedIn. I will be uh, trying to answer, um, you know, the, the, the general questions. It, it can be about, should I go into academia? Should I, uh, you know, get another job? Or what should I do right now? Or what are the right projects for me? Or how should I go about, you know, getting a career in AI and applied machine learning? So these would be the questions that I will be answering from time to time. But also I have come up with this new program, which is going to be called ACT, ACT or AI Concepts and Tools. And I will be uh, you know, showing you in, in separate sessions of, of ACT 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. And what we will be doing there is I will be explaining some very basic concepts and tools and methodologies that is used in the field of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. And in some cases, I'm also going to be inviting some of my former students to work with me to create these videos. And hopefully uh, you will be able to connect to the students better than you may, you may be able to connect with me. Uh, and maybe they speak the same jargon, maybe something uh, about their story or how they reached to the final destination will connect with you will resonate with you um, so that you, then you can create your own journey in AI and ML going forward so going forward there will be these uh, you know uh, philosophical sessions on uh, I will give you you know data about how I have done my journey so far how I have helped uh, several of my students in their journey in, in AI and ML field so far uh, but I will also be doing these sessions on act which is AI concepts and tools going forward. So stay tuned for it. And if you like all of this content, please do like and subscribe to this channel. All right, so this is the folder for the Build Your Own Research Internship, and we are currently inside week 10. And here I have this Word document that I will be reviewing right now. And 
after this, I will be showing you the GitHub repo going forward. So the code base is again given at the top. And let's look at the steps that we performed in this 10 week program. So the first thing we did was we baseline. So we tried to find that what is a good existing algorithm and we tried to find what was a bottleneck or what was wrong or what, what could be improved. In this case, we saw that there was this M2 or baseline method which was generating patches out of a, a particular image in order to do data augmentation. But what the, the downside was, it was extracting random patches of size 48 by 48. So it was just subsampling, uh, you know, randomly uh, anywhere in the image and it was generating 190,000 image patches and it was running the you know the unit over a hundred epochs and for test um, you know the, the images were the sub images were being extracted with a stride of five that means they were overlapping just five pixels apart and in this case 181,000 patches uh, you know were extracted in order to evaluate However, uh, now what we are doing, we are changing it so that first we are applying a method M1, which is using the Keras's uh, image data generator. Uh, and in that case, what we are generating is up to 24 augmented images per per image. So what we are doing there is we're zooming in, zooming out, we're panning in, we're, we're um, you know, sheared, and of course we're rotating the images a little bit in order to generate 24 different versions. Um, and then uh, you know, in this way for 20 images, we are getting 480 training images of size 512 by 512 each. And then we are, uh, you know, pipelining it with M2, in which we are now extracting non-overlapping patches. So non-overlapping patches uh, because if, if it's, it's all you know, quite right next to one another, you end up generating 160 patches per image, right? And in this case, uh, 160 patches times the 480 training images that you have, you have 76, you know, about 77,000 patches, which is, you know, less than even half of uh, you know the, the original training patches that you have so far and even the epochs now we can actually go down uh, we are able to finish our, our work with as little as it's half the number of epochs as before and for test data again we are extracting overlapping because in this case non-overlapping we saw that was generating a tiled sort of images where you could see the adjoining boundaries so overlapping and averaging of the pixels helped in this case, we generated 3,200 patches per images for the 20 test data. We have 64,000 patches, and you know that's enough for us to evaluate the 20 uh, test data set. So you see that the number of, of, of training and the test samples now have gone down. So the hyperparameterization. So this is where we spend most of our time. Is first we we listed out what are the different parameters for which we need to optimize this code or this uh, new, new framework that we came up with. So first of all, uh, for M2, we need to see that, you know, we were initially, uh, the algorithm is, is extracting random patches, but instead of that, we need to extract non-overlapping patches, and, and which would reduce the, uh, you know, intuitively, this would reduce the complex uh, computation complexity by a huge margin. And then for M1, we came up with the best parameters, and this is again by grid search, so rotation range, width, shift range, height, shift range, shear, zoom, horizontal flip, and everything. For, uh, you know, the, the patch width, again, we uh, experimented by, uh, you know, uh, different values, and we saw about 48, 48, 52, we were getting, you know, close by similar uh, performances. And we are looking at cross entropy loss, um, we are looking at batch size of 32 when we batch all the all the you know 32 images are batched at, at one particular point of time. Epochs 50 is what we saw is enough, and we also experimented with the unit depth. And I'll show you what that is. Is uh, I actually generated a new code in order to generate a depth of four or more. So um, you know the ideally we saw unit depth of three was was good enough. So here are the results. This is actually motivating in order to show why our, this particular code base is better than the existing code bases so far. And again, so first of all, we, we do the baselining. So this is, you know, if we just had used the Keras data generator or the augmenter, we've seen that we are only getting an F1 score of 0.75 and accuracy of about 0.0.9557. If we only use the tiling and if we use up to 110 epochs with a three layer unit, we get ab ab about an F1 score of 0.8, which is you know de definitely better and accuracy is a little bit higher. But now with the proposed uh, you know, uh, M1 followed by M2, we get extremely very close by our very similar F1 score, 
in less than half the number of ebooks and with less than half the number of, of training images. So we have been able to give a method to the madness. Now we can actually explain this end-to-end -end data augmentation and segmentation and accuracy and, and the final metric scores have actually been very similar. So if we use the proposed pipeline, we can actually reduce the computational complexity uh, by a huge margin and ensure that it is much more generalizable. So that is the contribution for this work. Now, this uh, result is, is there for you to, to see at, at any time that, you, that you'd like. So this is the code base that uh, we have created in this 10 week long program. And I just wanted to review it quickly. So in the, in the top, I have the links to the Google Drive. And uh, the first step that I do is I actually explain what are the prerequisite packages in Python that you require in order to run this code. I wanted to, uh, you know, put a, a mention here that the previous uh, code base was actually programmed programmed for a lower version of TensorFlow and Keras. So that's why we had to upgrade uh, certain commands. And uh, so that's why, uh, and if you want to watch this particular video, it gives you exactly the commands in order to set up an environment and in to install all of these packages. Um, so the first step after that is the, what is the proposed system diagram? So ideally, uh, if you didn't have this pipeline, you would just have taken the input images or pass through method one and just, uh, you know, unit and segment it, or you just take the images, pass through method two and unit segmentation. But here, we are actually putting them in a serial or a, you know one after the other pipeline in order to reduce the the number of augmented um, you know images that are required to train or in order to put a you know method to the madness so this i'm actually explaining uh, in in very uh, in implementation words why this particular algorithm is useful again we have done hyperparameterization batch normalization and, and everything so this is the important piece actually the, the the implementation steps so you should actually go about uh, cloning and download downloading all of this code as a, a zip file uh, the the main things to mention here is again the drive data it, it is available for for download publicly so you'll have to download it yourself I cannot host that data on my website because it is against uh, I, ca I cannot redistribute others data so you'll have to download the drive data on your own um, the the main code uh, for for this particular code base is actually this uh, uh, you know the main uh, I, I call it the the main uh, XAI E2E augmentation and here you'll see I've actually been able to wrap up every single uh, you know the, the code base in in single functions so if you go to each and every code base um, so let's see here uh, this is main fundus integration and this is the method one where we are using the uh, you know Keras uh, data generator uh, augmenter and um, so and, and after that the, the main um, you know function that you are running is this run non overlap patches and this is the, the the training uh you know data here i wanted to show you that i've actually come you know coded all of the uh the, the network uh the, also this network is, is coded and it's pretty new so uh there is this unit which is the three layer uh unit so you know it, it uh, the, there is a pooling and, and convolution for three layers and then again there's up pool for you know three more layers after that uh but for for gnet this is the one that i've actually coded so it has batch norm and dropout in the optimal amount so uh, and you need to probably make a modification in line number 180 seven in order to change it from unit to gnet uh, so if you wanted to change the depth from three to four and the one key thing or the you know implementation detail that i wanted to mention here was uh, if you want to change the the layers even more you can actually do that uh, by uh, you know uh, by, by adding more layers or, or even taking layers off but how would you know that what is the composition of each and every uh, layer you can actually use this command called model summary and this will tell you what is the composition of this unit and what is the total number of parameters so i wanted to give you an example in this case the unit having three layers going down to so the depth of three layers has about 517,000 uh, parameters that it has to train. But if you go here from, uh, you know, three to four layers, you will get about 900,000 parameters. So you see just going down or just going one extra layer of, of depth for unit, your number of parameters actually goes up pretty high amount. So um, again, these should be the commands that you can then use to modify your uh, unit structure to make it deeper or shallower. And um, 
you know finally the the results so what we see is that the proposed method uh, is capable of achieving very similar f1 scores and accuracy as uh, you know the original uh, m2 method but here what i wanted to show is is the number of epochs is less than half and also uh, you know the number of of patches that you require because it's more systematic it's not randomly generated patches then your learning is actually better and that's why you are able to now explain uh, the otherwise end-to-end -end model that was m2 and then you have the references in the bottom so this is the way in which you would go about generating your own github you know repo uh, if there are any questions questions, comments, uh, if you'd want me to clarify a certain section or a particular code, please let me know and I would be more than happy to, to run you know, as many functions by you as required. So good luck and I you know, want you to utilize this in, in the best way possible. So stay tuned for more episodes going forward.